So here we are together again. So I'm working on this nice little 12 by 12 here, little woodland scene. Now, I've been working on the trees here for the last day. Um, I'm now going to start working on the foreground here and I'm going to show you exactly how I'm going to do it. So this, at the moment, this is at a blocked in stage. Uh, it's just had one coat of acrylic. Obviously that's now dry. And I am going to show you how to do the bluebells in this sort of nice wooded area here and an obvious path here. But that has just been blocked in, in a sort of like a middle, middle tone. Um, but let's get going on that now. I'll show you how I'm going to do it. So first of all, the first thing to do is to add the darker tones. Now there are bluebells all the way across the front here, um, but as it comes closer, it, the bluebells become a little bit less dense and you can see a lot more of the grass through. So I'll put those in afterwards. Now I'm gonna use some liquid for this um, and I'm mixing it with some ivory black. So it's like a, just a, a darker glaze. Um, I might also mix in a bit of cobalt blue and a touch of that dioxine purple. Only a little bit. Let's see how that looks. Fine for this bit here, I think. And I'm just going to go roughly just over this or sort of distant area. Probably a bit, even a bit more blue than dioxine. Yeah, that's a bit better. So the brush I'm using here is a tree and texture brush from Rosemary Co. And this is size three eighths of an inch. So I'm going over the lighter bits and the darker bits with this, just going over all of it. Just dabbing it on there. This brush gives you quite a nice sort of spotty textured look which is perfect for these bluebells. Okay, now as we move forward, I'm gonna do exactly the same thing here, but I'm gonna change the color and I'm gonna go with a green a sap, permanent sap green. So I've changed the brush just to do this bit of the foreground here. Um, this is a coma brush I'm using. Um, now for those of you that are interested in using the same brushes that I use, if you now go to Rosemary & Co's website, um, which I'll leave a link in the description, you'll be able to buy a set um, of my brushes and uh, they, they are the exact same brushes that I'm using here so now before I start working on the highlights what I'm going to do while I've got this brush out I'm just going to more of a sideways motion here on the path. What you seem to have in there is sort of lots of little dead leaves and sticks and things that are laying on the on the floor. Thank you. 
So let's get going on some of the greenery in here. So what colours are we going to use? We're going to use Windsor Lemon. It's quite light, the, the greenery in there, until you come right down to the foreground where it becomes a bit more, a bit richer. So we're going to use that. We're going to use Thalo, yellow shade. Let's see if we can just mix that over here. And I'm using this uh, fan brush here, which is a Series 27 and it's size medium. Also from Rosemary & Co. And also in the set. So just in the lighter areas. I'm just going to dab it on. I'm not using any liquid. And I haven't thinned it down with white spirit or mineral spirit or whatever you want to call it. In fact, I need a little bit more paint mix there. doing is a, I'm putting on there doing a slight just a slight downward motion and it's just sort of giving you a, a bit of a, a hint of the you know grass texture wouldn't use this when I come right down to the foreground because it just won't look quite right but also putting some of it into that blue there, just sort of here and there. Sometimes when doing this, the best brush to use is the is the oldest. So the brush I'm using here is just a fan. In fact, it would have looked something like that at one time um, but it's just old and hasn't been cleaned very well so it's sort of aged a little bit a bit more but sometimes that works better so it's a good idea to experiment with the brushes you're using try and get the right effect so what we're going to do now is a little bit more detail just in the the uh, greenery in the foreground. Just put in more of an obvious sign of the you know foliage that you get with bluebells.
doing these bluebells in the uh, highlight or, high, or sunny areas here where you've got the, the sun shining on the top of those bluebells. Colour changes from a sort of a purpley blue to almost like a pink. And that colour is really difficult to get. So I'm using titanium white and I'm just mixing in with it a little bit of magenta, just a tiny bit, just to give it that little bit of colour. But it's a very difficult colour to get. And even this isn't, isn't quite right. But it's, just, it's, uh, it's one of those few colours that is just very difficult to get right. So I've messed around with a couple of different techniques to try and get it right and I've settled on using a fan brush here, series 2055 and it's uh, it's allowed me to get some really tight little blobs of colour. Just using the very corner. Okay, so now I'm going to get started on this path here. It doesn't require a great deal of, of work really, it's kind of just suggesting the detail that's there. There's not a lot on it, I think you've got quite a few dead leaves and things there. But uh, it's just got this sort of stippled look. So I'm going to do the, the shaded areas with this sort of mauvey brownie colour here, which I've mixed with a bit of the magenta, a bit of yellow ochre in there. Probably even going with a bit of that burnt sienna. tricky bit 
is going to be getting these highlights right. And they're really quite light. Right, so coming to the end now, I'm just going to add a few darker bits to the path and then we are pretty much there. So just using burnt amber, I'm just going to sort of stipple it on. In particular, around the edge of the path here where they've got, you know, leaves, dead leaves, leaves are more likely to gather. And it just makes the edge of that sort of pathway look a little bit less regular as well. <laughs> 